Hello and welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm Dustin Roberts, the Outreach Minister here on staff. And for the next half hour, I'll also be your host as Rabbi Schneider shows us an eye-opening glimpse of heaven. Have you ever wondered what heaven will be like? Is it just a fanciful place somewhere in the clouds that we hope our loved ones go to? Or is it a real place? The Bible gives us clues. And today, Rabbi Schneider will share how we can experience the full glory of paradise as we look forward to and prepare ourselves for the world to come. Our message comes from our series on prophetic fulfillment of God's fall holy days. And here is Rabbi. The blowing of the shofar announces the return of Jesus. In the previous broadcast, I showed you the foundation of this and why the blowing of the shofar announces the return of Jesus. Why God appeared to Israel 3,500 years ago at Mount Sinai and announced his appearance with the blowing of a shofar. And why, when Israel celebrates this feast every year, they're to be reminded of the fact that God is going to appear again to the entire world when shofars are blown in every every synagogue all of the world, even up to this day, on the first day of the seventh month of Tishrei in God's holy calendar. Now, I know that some of you aren't familiar with the Hebrew month of Tishrei. Suffice it to say that God's got a holy calendar that he outlines for us in the book of Leviticus chapter 23. And it's for Christians, followers of Jesus, whether you're a Gentile or a Jew. I'm here today to tell the church of God and those that have not yet put their faith in Yeshua, that heaven is a real place. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. In the book of Revelation, we read in chapter number six, a little bit about what the present heaven that Jesus called paradise looks like. John was on the island of Patmos. He was brought up to see what today is described as paradise, the place that believers go to when they die. So I'm gonna pick up by reading Revelation chapter six, verse nine through 11, which tells us once again, a little bit about what the present heaven or paradise looks like. What is the place that you will go to when you die, if you're a believer today, if Jesus is not yet returned? Let's read. When the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they maintained. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And there was given to each one of them a white robe, and they were told that they should rest for a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed, even as they had been, would be completed also. It seems at first glance that we can't find out a lot about this heaven that we're going to go to if we die before Jesus returns. But actually, there's a number of significant clues here that will help us to understand. First of all, to make the point that I've already made, we learn from this verse of scripture that I just read that those people that were alive during the Apostle John's lifetime that had lost their life because of their testimony in Jesus. In other words, they were boldly proclaiming Jesus and were put to death because of it. What happened to them when they died is they didn't just wait in the grave. They weren't just sleeping after they died. But John tells us they went up into this heaven, this paradise, and were there waiting under the altar of God. So the first thing I want to simply have you see is that When you die, if you're a believer in Jesus, you're going to go to be with God. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, because he put his faith in him, today he said to him, you'll be with me in paradise. You don't have to be afraid of dying. When you die, if you know Jesus, you're going to instantly go to paradise. You're going to go to this heaven we spoke of. These believers that lost their lives because of their testimony, because of their witness for Jesus, that went to this paradise, this first heaven, listen what happened. They retained their identity of who they were on earth. In other words, they didn't go to heaven and suddenly their experience in heaven was totally disconnected from who they were on earth. 
They were in heaven, but they remembered who they were on earth. They said, how long, O Lord, will it be before you avenge our blood on those that killed us on the earth? The person that you're going to be in heaven is connected to who you are on earth. It's not a total disconnect. You're going to retain your identity, your personal history, your experience in earth will be remembered in heaven. You're not going to all of a sudden lose your identity. It's important to understand that. That's why every single thing that you do on earth matters. Jesus said, we're going to see in a second, that even a cup of cold water given to one of his disciples while you're on earth means something. And so I want you to understand that. You're not going to become someone totally different. You're going to be transformed. You're going to be changed. You're going to be glorified. You're going to be given a new body, but you're still going to be the same person. In heaven, we're going to be able to express ourselves directly to God, and he's going to answer there. Paul said, now we know in part, but then we'll know in full. Notice that these that were in paradise that we're reading about in Revelation 6, they called out to God. They expressed themselves to God. They had free access to God. And God answered them. He said, a little while longer, there's still others that are on earth that are going to be killed for their faith. And I need to wait until my whole plan is completed before I avenge your blood. So in heaven, we're going to freely express ourselves to God and the Lord will directly answer us. Full disclosure, full relationship there. I want you to also understand a very precious portion of this section of scripture that we just read. There are many martyrs in heaven, many of them, not just one, but many. But notice here that they cried out, it says, and they cried out with a loud voice, singular. Even though there were many, they cried out with one voice. And what I love about this is it conveys to us the unity that we will experience in heaven. Just pause and think about this. How much pain do each one of us experience on earth because of disunity? Not getting along with our roommate, not getting along with our husband or wife, not getting along with our children, not getting along with our coworkers or our employers, not getting along with our neighbors. How much pain has grieved the human heart because of disunity? But in heaven, there's going to be complete unity, church, complete harmony. That alone makes heaven. I mean, there's so much more to it, but just the fact that everyone's going to get along. Everyone's going to be in unity. Everyone's going to be bonded by peace and love. It's going to be so, so very beautiful. They also remembered their lives on earth. They, they, they thought about what happened to them there. You're going to remember, beloved, everything that you experienced on earth, all the good things. God's going to wipe every tear from your eyes. No more sorrow, suffering, or pain, but you're going to remember everything on earth that was beautiful and precious. Finally, I want to point out two last points, and that is this that there was a strong sense of justice that they had. They said, Lord, when are you going to avenge our blood on those that killed us? Now, we're taught to turn the other cheek, to forgive those that have wronged us. But somehow in heaven, God is going to deal out retribution upon those that have not repented and turned to him. And everything that has been wrong is going to be made right. They said, how long, O Lord, holy and true, Will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? There is a place. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. I want you to understand, no one's going to get away with anything. Yes, those that have turned their life over to Jesus, their sins will be covered. Praise God for that. But those that have not repented, those that have not said, I'm sorry, those that have not humbled themselves, those that have not gotten right with the Lord, beloved, they will pay for every sin they've committed. God's gonna make every wrong right. He's in addition to being a God of mercy, church, he's a God of justice. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi will be right back. But first, did you know that you can receive real-time encouragement straight from Rabbi through text message? Visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com and click on the link that says Rabbi Text Me. Or you can text the keyword rabbi 
to the number 88777. Rabbi sends these special text messages as the Holy Spirit leads, and he looks forward to connecting with you real soon. Did you know that this ministry is all about preparing the way for the inevitable return of King Jesus? Well, it's true, and we'd love for you to partner with us in this life-changing mission today. Together, we will change lives, not just locally, but all over the world. To support this team, call 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. Or you can visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And now here's Rabbi Schneider. Lastly today, I want you to see in the 11th verse, there's going to be a reward. And there was given to each one of them a white robe. And they were told that they should rest for a little while longer. Each one was given a white robe. There is going to be a personal reward to every single child of God given. You're going to be rewarded. You need to understand this. Jesus said, behold, I come quickly. Revelation 22:12. 12. Behold, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he's done. You're going to be rewarded. This is an important theme and concept to have in your heart. What you do for the Lord matters. You're going to be rewarded for every sacrifice you make, for every act of love and obedience that you show the Lord. You're going to be rewarded for it. In fact, God wants us to live righteous lives, and he motivates us by helping us to understand that we will be rewarded for the choices that we make. I want you to consider this very important concept. People that are in hell, they cannot do good. The only thing people in hell can do is curse. Jesus described hell as a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. In hell, you can't do good. You can't praise God. You can't show compassion. You can't love. There is no peace. In heaven, you can do no wrong because there's nothing that will be able to get into heaven that can defile it. In heaven, the only thing you'll be able to do, it's going to be so effortless, it's so natural, you can't do anything else. The only thing you'll be able to do in heaven is praise God, love, serve, all those things that are the fruit of the Spirit. That's all that's going to be there. You won't even have a choice. It's just going to be who you are. It's going to be your nature. But right now, beloved one, listen, right now on earth, you and I, we have a choice. Every day, we have a choice between life and death, between hate and love. Every day we're making choices and we're building up for ourselves treasures in heaven, just as Jesus taught. When we choose love, when we choose him, when we choose truth, we're building up for ourselves treasures in heaven when moth and rust don't destroy, where thieves don't break in and steal. You need to understand everything that you're doing, every thought, every word, every action, it all matters it all counts. Jesus even said that every word spoken, we're going to give an account for. Matthew 16, 27, Jesus said, for the son of man is going to come in the glory of his father with his angels and will then repay every man according to his deeds. Matthew 10, 42, and whoever in the name of a disciple gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water to drink, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. Now, before we move on to our final section of this message, I want to read for you a very important portion of the Word of God. I'm going to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 through 15. Pay attention. For no man, Paul was speaking, can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire." 
what the Word of God is teaching here is that salvation is a free gift of grace. That thief on the cross that was crucified next to Jesus had no good works, but he put his heart and his faith in Jesus. He sunk the teeth of faith into Jesus, and Jesus said to him, although the man had no good works, Jesus said to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. That man was saved, but he had no good works. What this scripture is teaching that I just read is that the only foundation that saves us is faith in Jesus Christ. But once we put our faith in him, we then have an opportunity to build in our relationship with him. We have an opportunity to build on that foundation of our faith in him. Some men, Paul teaches, build on their relationship with Jesus with gold and silver and precious stones. And what happens, Paul says, is that when the day of the Lord comes, there's going to be fire and God is going to test every man's work. And those that live lives loving Jesus, doing good, serving, doing good and loving people, making sacrifices for the sake of the kingdom, they're going to be rewarded. Paul also teaches here that other people are going to waste their lives. They put their faith in Jesus, but they didn't build on the foundation with anything that mattered. Paul says they built with wood and hay and straw and stubble. Paul said what's going to happen is they'll still be saved, but nothing's going to go with them into heaven. Their works will be burned up because their life is going to have been revealed at the coming of Jesus' glory with fire to be worthless. They wasted their lives. They didn't use their talents to serve him. They didn't use their talent to serve his people. They didn't use their finances to build the kingdom. Paul says, yeah, they'll go to heaven, but they're going to suffer loss there, Paul said. He said, if any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss but he himself will be saved, yet so is through fire. Yeah, the person will be saved and in heaven, but they're going to have suffered loss. There's going to be something about it that's grieving. They'll be there, but they'll have suffered loss, and they'll have no beautiful works that will shine like the stars forever and ever in their eternal state. So I conclude today by saying you have a choice. You have a choice. We're going to meet Jesus. We're going to go to this paradise if we die before he comes. If we live until his return, we're going to go to a place eventually, along with all believers, called the new heavens and the new earth. God tells us about it in Revelation chapter number 21, verse 10 and 11. He says this, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. A new heavens and a new earth paradise for those of us that die before Jesus comes. The new heavens and the new earth described in Revelation 21 and 22 for all believers at the end of the millennial age. Wouldn't it be ridiculous to only lead our lives for what is here and now, the things of the world that are passing away, rather than building for the future? Jesus said, build up for yourselves treasures in the kingdom of heaven where moth and rust don't destroy and thieves don't break in and steal. I want to encourage you today. The Feast of Trumpets is to remind us that Jesus is coming back. Heaven is a real place. Jesus is going to reward us and he wants to wake us up. He wants to shake us up. Arise, O sleeper, because Jesus is coming back for you. He's going to reward every man according to what he's done and he's going to take us to heaven to shine like the stars forever and ever if we'll lead our lives for him on this earth now. I want you to put your hand over your heart right now and say, Jesus is coming back for me. Father God, King Jesus, I'll be meeting you very soon. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. And if you would like to not only hear a rabbi, but to see him as well, then be sure to check out our YouTube channel. There you can learn more about this program and about our Bible teacher, Rabbi Schneider. You'll find all the details for viewing this channel online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. There you can also find plenty of resources and videos filled with messianic content. 
content. You can read some comments and testimonies from your fellow co-listeners, and you can learn more about our outreach ministries, like our prison ministries and our international crusades. We even have a page dedicated to learning more about partnering with us. Here's Rabbi to tell us more. All of us that are in relationship with God have within us the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of the living God. Jesus said in John 4 that his spirit within us could become a well of eternal life springing up so that we would thirst no more. But the key is, how do we drink from his spirit within us? In order to do this, beloved one, we have to die to ourselves. I believe that through honoring the Lord with our tithes and our offerings, we go through an act of denying ourselves, whereby through that act of dying to ourselves, we're better able to live from the life that's within us. Giving to the Lord with our finances has always been a principle that Father's taught for those that have been in relationship with Him. If discovering the Jewish Jesus is being a blessing to you, I would encourage you to honor Father God through this ministry if you feel the Holy Spirit prompting you to do so. Beloved, I want to thank you in advance for your love and financial support. God bless you and shalom. You can give a donation by connecting with us in one of these four ways. First, give online when you visit us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com or you can give a gift today by calling 800-777-7835. You can also send your donation via text message when you type the keyword rabbi to the number 45777. Or finally, you can reach out to us through the Rabbi Schneider mobile app. Just click the donate button in the middle of the screen and follow the simple instructions. As a token of our appreciation for your generous financial support, we'll send you one of Rabbi's straightforward and authentic CD messages. These messages, they're also available as digital downloads, and they are special in that they're not broadcast, but they are select audio recordings from Rabbi's church in Toledo, Ohio, the Lion of Judah. And then we'll also send you our latest newsletter. Rabbi prepares these newsletters each month, especially for you, so that you can soak in God's word and promises for your life today and every day. And you know, there are seasons in life when we'd like to catch our favorite program, but we just don't have time. So let me remind you that you can hear Rabbi's authentic and uncompromising messages anytime that you like, no matter what you're doing or where life takes you, just by subscribing to our podcast. Download this program on your favorite podcasting platform and click the subscribe button. Rabbi's messages will automatically load so you can catch up whenever and where Wherever it works for you. To learn more about our podcast, visit us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Right now, here is Rabbi with a special blessing. In the Old Testament book of Numbers, we find a blessing God speaks over his children through Moses and Aaron. It carries the idea of favor and expression. Open your heart to the Spirit and the Word today and receive Father's goodness into your life with confidence. Yahweh, 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance. And the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom.
Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Join us again tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider explains how to apply the blood of Jesus in your life right now. So be listening Wednesday to Discovering the Jewish Jesus.